there's no other way to say it. My mother died last week. It's no secret that we didn't get along. It's no secret that I never felt like she accepted me as not being her. Right. And since I never knew my father, I have no idea who he was. And so, of course, I know nothing about his propensities or propensities that run in his family. Then I can only assume that my mother couldn't accept that I was not her twin, that I was not her clone, and that I inherited the makeup that I inherited. When people that you have such mixed, extremely mixed feelings about die suddenly like that. It's like everything that needed to get said that could never be said will absolutely never, ever, ever be said now because they're gone and you can't even have that discussion even if the discussion is even possible, which it probably wasn't in the first place, but as long as she was alive, I at least had the option that maybe we would be able to talk about that shit. And I'm the one that bounces back from everything. So, just give me a little benefit of the doubt. I need to have this talk because I'm worried about my Aunt Alicia, who has barely even said a word. Not a word. If you can imagine my Aunt Alicia, who can't ever stop talking, has barely said a word since my mother died. Who knew that it was even inside her to, for the first few days after my mother died, believe that she had committed suicide. No, she didn't. She's 66 years old and she died in her sleep. I'm kind of mad at my mother because I feel like she got away with never resolving stuff that it really was on her to resolve. For never explaining to me those five years, it was about five years, that she would come flying up the stairs to my room, waving a belt around, yelling and screaming out of her mind and completely out of control and out of character because she was nothing if not the picture of control. She was too controlled. And a few times I tried to ask her about it as I got older. And she was always, well, that's in the past. And then finally, I felt like I was pretty grown because I was like 27 or 28. And I brought it up again after not having brought it up for about, I don't know, maybe 10 years. Like, since around the time that I started college. And she said exactly the same thing she had said when I was younger. That's in the past. And I'm sorry. And she even said, if 
that hurt you. She didn't even say that that hurt you that time. She said, I'm sorry if it hurt you, but that's in the past. And she added, I was having a weak moment. And she's pretty much slapped me down passive-aggressively by saying that's in the past and we're not going to talk about it. And so I said, you're in a weak moment for five years? And she just said, yes. So, yeah, I, I'm kind of mad that that never that never got answered. I even asked my Aunt Alicia about it once, and she <laughs> she never saw it happen. She never saw it happen. I had never brought it up. It, maybe one or two friends in college, and then I just, I wanted to put it out of my mind because I get over stuff. But for some reason, that, keeps coming back and it came back super pal big last week when she suddenly dies in her sleep and I'm trying to deal with the fact that all of a sudden she's not there and it's obvious that my Aunt Alicia isn't herself. And I realize I'm going to have to deal with the fact that my mother's gone. I'm going to have to deal with the fact of all the unresolved stuff that I can't break up when I turned 50 or 55 or 60. And maybe she would finally have talked to me about it. I've got to deal with all of that and handle all the death stuff. Life is unfair, and so is death.